NLMB is one of the biggest and most dangerous gangs on the east side of Chicago. Besides their reputation in the streets, they also have some of the hottest rappers in the game, including G Herbo and Lil Bibby. But before No Limit and the Muskegon Boys linked up, both gangs was almost wiped out after beefing with bigger sets in the city. Here's what happened. NLMB stands for No Limit Muskegon Boys, and it's actually an alliance between two different renegade sets. The Muskegon Boys started out as a small set of GDs. In the early days, it was affiliated with Lakeside, another GD set. But even before they became enemies, the situation wasn't good. Even though they was both GD sets, Lakeside constantly disrespected MBG. At the time, MBG had only around 20 members. Lakeside is one of the biggest sets in the area with hundreds of members. Eventually, the disrespect got out of control and some MBG affiliates had to take a stand. But Lakeside just turned up the heat and started robbing dudes from MBG whenever they wanted. MBG affiliates Fazo and his brother Fab sent shots at them. Then Fazo was gunned down and Fab left the streets for good. Fazo's death was allegedly payback for the murder of a Lakeside member by MBG affiliates in 2008. No one knows for sure who killed Fazo, but most people believe that Lakeside was involved. Killing Fazo wasn't enough though. A year after he died, a barbecue memorial was being held at the same location he was murdered. Faisal's friends and family was out grilling, putting up crosses and stuffed animals in celebration of his life. But then someone drove by and shot five people, including a 10-year-old boy. Around 9 that night, a black car pulled up to the memorial and started letting off shots. Five people got hit before the car sped away, but luckily, they all survived. No one was ever arrested for the shooting, but Lakeside was allegedly responsible. Faisal's death had a major impact on MBG and NLMB. He and G Herbo was close, and Herb even named his debut mixtape Welcome to Fazo Land in his honor. Around the same time, No Limit was in a war with Black Mob. A Black Peace Stone set was also allied with Lakeside. No Limit and Black Mob was cool with each other until a No Limit affiliate named Vito started trapping in Black Mob's territory. According to rumors, a Black Mob affiliate violated Vito for not checking in when in the area. A dude named Hell Rare was leading No Limit at the time, and he told Vito to go and get payback on the Black Mob affiliate. Instead of catching the dude while he was alone, Vito tried to shoot the black mob member while he was with his family. All of the shots missed, but shooting at someone while they was with their family was a major violation of the gang code. Some OGs got involved in the situation and tried to talk to Vito, but he refused to apologize and was killed on the spot. After this, No Limit and Black Mob was at each other's throats, but Black Mob had a lot more shooters and No Limit was outnumbered and outgunned. Other Peace Stone says that was allied with No Limit never stepped in to help, so No Limit linked up with MBG and formed NLMB. Now NLMB could defend themselves, but their ops started to link up too. Affiliates from a bunch of different sets, including members from Lakeside and Black Mob, came together to form KTS, or Kill to Survive. This is when the violence in the streets became worse than ever. The beef between NLMB and KTS started after a KTS affiliate named Lil Pez was shot in the head in 2008. Pez wasn't officially a member of the gang, but he grew up in the neighborhood and was respected by everyone around. Even though no one was arrested for killing Pez, KTS thought NLMB was behind the hit. His death sparked a war between the two gangs, and the body count has been growing ever since. Two of the most famous KTS members was KTS Vaughn and his brother, KTS Dre. Vaughn originally ripped a set of the Vice Lords, and Dre claimed Lakeside, but they both joined KTS. Vaughn allegedly committed his first murder in 2011 when he took out a member of 8x13 named Gotti. According to reports, Gotti was chilling in his car when someone drove up next to him and shot him in the head. After this, Vaughn went on a killing spree that lasted four years and only ended because Vaughn was killed in 2015. In 2012, Vaughn allegedly saw a group of NLMB members outside of a liquor store and started shooting. According to rumors, the car he was in drove by and Vaughn started letting off shots, killing two members of NLMB and injuring four more. One of the guys who died was Alamo, a 57-year-old who wasn't even an active member. The other was Rock, a 19-year-old affiliate who was a known shooter. G Herbo got hit too, but luckily survived. The shooting cemented the rivalry between him and Vaughn, and the war between NLMB and KTS was about to turn up for real. In October 2012, Vaughn and Dre caught an NLMB member named Cairo at a McDonald's. A video of the altercation shows Dre and Vaughn cornering Cairo and trying to get him to say, F rock. One of the No Limit members Vaughn allegedly killed a few months earlier. Cairo refused to say it, so Dre hit him in the face and broke his jaw. And then an NLMB member named Moody comes out with a gun, so Vaughn and Dre took off. According to rumors, Cairo, Moody, and another No Limit member named Kobe left McDonald's. Then they came back with guns and let off shots at KTS, hitting a member named Pasto in the arm. A few months later, G Herbo and another NLMB member named C Money or Mad Max allegedly killed a dude from Lakeside named Lolo. Lolo was walking down the street with a friend when they got pulled up on by C Money and Herbo. C Money shot Lolo on the chest, and G Herbo allegedly shot his friend in the ankle when he tried to run away. Lolo was rushed to the hospital but died later that day. Lakeside changed their name to Lolo World after he died to honor him, then Von Impasto went out for revenge. 
on August 10th, 2013, a bunch of No Limit affiliates were celebrating Lil Bibby's brother's birthday. G Herbo, Cairo, Kobe, and other NLMB members were chilling on the block, shooting dice. Out of nowhere, Kobe decided he wanted to go home. So No Limit affiliates offered to give him a ride, but he decided to walk instead. While he was walking by the Sam McDonald's where Von Andre pressed Cairo, a car drove by, and someone started letting off shots. G Herbo and the other NLMB affiliates was only a couple blocks away and rushed over when they heard the shots. But by the time they got there, Kobe was dead and his killers was gone. No one knows for sure who killed Kobe, but rumors say that Von Apostle was the shooters. Kobe and Herb was close homies. His 2015 mixtape, Ballin' Like I'm Kobe, was named in his honor. Casey is Von dissed Kobe when he dropped a video for his song Kill to Survive. In the video, he wears a jacket that says, F your dead homie, with a list of dead NLMB members that included Kobe. After all the violence and disrespect on both sides, the situation between Von and Herb could only end one way. And on June 23rd, 2015, NLMB allegedly took out their biggest op. Von was walking down the 7500 block of South Indiana Avenue when two dudes hopped out of an SUV and let off shots. Von was hit multiple times and died at the scene. No one was ever charged with the murder, but No Limit affiliates did some on social media the day he died, and many believe that they the ones who did it. Some people believe that C-Money and another NLMB member named Choppa was behind the hit. Choppa and Von was going back and forth on social media the day before the shooting. After, C-Money changed his Instagram name to Mad Max Smoker, which was KCS Von's nickname. With his biggest op out of the way, Herb was able to focus more on his career. Not long after that, he dropped the track Kill Shit with Lil Bibby, which quickly blew up. Now, NLMB was getting mainstream attention, but they wore in the streets wasn't over. In January 2021, one of G Herbo's day ones was killed while getting a haircut in the middle of the day. Lil Greg was an NLMB affiliate who grew up with Herb. He was sitting in the barber shop, but someone walked in and shot him in the head. The shooter escaped, but police later arrested a dude named Christopher Mosley for the murder. Mosley had ties to KCS, but Dre said that he didn't have anything to do with it. The police found Mosley with a pistol, but had to release him due to lack of evidence. KTS Dre still wanted revenge for his brother's death, but he was dealing with legal issues at the time. He was on house arrest for a gun charge he caught in April 2020. He was allowed to leave the house for a few hours a day, but took a trip to Wisconsin without permission and was arrested for violating his parole. His fiance posted his bail, but Dre had to stay locked up overnight. The next day, his fiance and grandma met him at the jail to take him home. While they was walking towards their car, two other cars full of shooters pulled up. The shooters hopped out and started letting off shots. Dre's grandma was shot in the knees, but survived. Dre got hit 64 times in the face and body and died on the spot. No one's been arrested for this brutal murder, but some say it was NLMB getting payback for the death of Lil Greg. And Dre claimed he wasn't involved with Greg's murder, but he made fun of him afterwards and told other NLMB members to go to the barber shop. There's no telling what'll happen next between NLMB and KTS. Both sides have caught a lot of bodies, but right now, it seems like No Limit is doing more damage. Von and Dre was two of the highest ranking members of KTS, and their deaths was a major loss to the game. Meanwhile, G Herbo and Lil Bibby keep on making waves in the industry. Herb dropped his album BTSD in 2020, with features from massive artists like Juice World, Lil Uzi Vert, 21 Savage, and others. Lil Bibby and his brother G Money launched their own label in 2017 and were the ones to discover and sign Juice World. So even though they suffered a lot of losses, and LMB is still prospering. Artists like Herb and Bibby are bringing in legal money and connections while the rest of the crew is holding it down in the streets. NLMB started after two small sets linked up to save themselves from extinction, and now they're one of the most influential sets in Chicago.